I just showed you a nice way to try out different arrangement IDs, come up with different buildups and stuff. And of course, Apple knows that. They see that we do that using the folders. And they thought, hey, maybe we could do that even better, make it a little more elegant. And they did. And they came up with the arrangement track which is basically the same as what we saw in the previous tutorial, but a little more streamlined, if you will, and to the point. Let's just go ahead and see what it's about. We still have that little arrangement that we had at the start of the previous tutorial. And instead of now just selecting blocks of four bars and putting them into folders, we're just gonna make use of the arrangement track. The arrangement track is one of the global tracks. That makes sense. You know those tracks that control the tempo or the signature of your track. And they are found under this little button in the top right here. If I click this, this will show us the global tracks. And there it is, proud at the top, arrangement. And not everybody needs them all the time, so they're neatly tucked away, marker, signature, tempo. Let's focus on arrangement. If I click the little plus sign to the right, I get to create an arrangement marker and Logic will at least try to name that marker properly. Let's click at the beginning and we will create a mark and there it is. It's now called Verse, which is not very logical at the start of my arrangement, but you can change that if you're not happy with that. So from the menu, I'll choose Intro. But if none of these descriptions fit your ID of your arrangement marker, you can double click to the left of the marker and Give it a name yourself. I can resize it like this. Our intro is going to be four bars long. And we end up with the next part of our arrangement. Let's click the plus sign again and we get a verse. Resize that again. And I'll speed this up a bit. I'll click twice on the plus sign. I get a chorus and a bridge. If I resize the chorus, the bridge comes along with it. I'll resize that too. I'm not going to use a bridge, so I'm going to double click here and call it outro. So we now basically have the same idea of what we saw in the previous tutorial, except that these are not folders, but just markers to identify the different sections of our song. If you want to make it really easy, you can even give each of these a color by opening the color window, selecting each marker and color at will. I think purple fits an outro. All right, so there we go. Well, now that I think of it, maybe it'd be even easier to follow what I'm about to do if I also color the entire sections of the song. So I'll give this uh, the same color. Well, what was it? I'll just give it the exact same color. Same for the chorus. There we go. The verse. So that's the fourth color. I've done this all because I just wanted to be really clear what is happening in a moment. We got our markers, the intro, the verse, the chorus, and the outro. And instead of moving the entire sections or the folders around, I can now, for instance, just grab the intro folder and put it behind the chorus or even use it as the outro. Okay, and maybe the outro itself could work a lot better as the intro. So I'll just drag that to the start. And perhaps it'd be nice to have a chorus first before we drop into the verse. All your automation and stuff uh, moves along with it, of course. So that is a very fast and elegant way of trying out different arrangement IDs. The arrangement track.